And thank you very much for joining us. Turning the tables on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, where former aide has turned into a rival. In what looks like the end of Netanyahu's era in Israel, far-right Yamina party leader Naftali Bennett has decided to join forces with the opposition leader Yair Lapid. Bennett has thrown his crucial support behind a unity government to unseat Netanyahu. This might prove to be a major step towards ending the 12-year rule of the Israeli leader. This could also end the political crisis in Israel that led to four consecutive elections in two years. Emphasizing the need to unite the country, Yamina party chief Naftali Bennett has said there is no feasible way for the right wing under Netanyahu to assemble a majority in parliament. Now that unity government or elections are the only options, Bennett said going to tra additional elections would result in unprecedented instability, while a unity government would help end this cycle of political deadlock. The political crisis in Israel is unprecedented on a global scale. We can move to a fifth, sixth, tenth election to dismantle the walls of the country brick by brick until our house will collapse on us, and it's possible to stop the madness and take responsibility. There is no right-wing government. Four rounds of elections and two months prove to us all that there simply is not a right-wing government to be led by Netanyahu. It's either a fifth election or a unity government. Post the announcement, Benjamin Netanyahu lashed out at Bennett, calling the possible coalition government a danger for the security of Israel. Netanyahu has urged right-wing politicians who have joined the coalition talks not to establish what he called a leftist government. Don't form a left-wing government. Such a government is a danger to Israel's security and future. Think about it. What will it do for Israel's deterrence? How will we look in the eyes of our enemies? What will they say in Iran? What will they say in Gaza? What will they do in Iran and in Gaza? What will they say in the halls of government in Washington? If a new government is formed, it will be the most wide-ranging coalition ever formed in Israel. Opposition chief Yair Lapid would bring together a coalition of right-wing, centrist and leftist parties and hand Netanyahu his first election defeat since 1999. The 71-year-old has been in power consecutively since 2009, but has failed to form a coalition government following four elections since 2019. He is now on trial on corruption charges, which he denies. Yair Lapid, who is the lead or the head of the centrist Yesh Atid party, faces a June 2nd deadline from Israel's president to announce a new government. Now, Bennett's Yamina party's six seats in the 120-member parliament will help him do so. Under a prospective power-sharing deal, if that takes place, Bennett would replace Netanyahu as prime minister. He will later give way to centrist Lapid in a rotation agreement. There are still plenty of obstacles in the way of the formation of the new government. Maybe that's a good thing because we'll have to overcome them together. That's our first test to see if we can find smart compromises. As Israel is inching closer to a government without the most dominant figure in Israeli politics over the past three decades, it is Netanyahu's former aide and right-wing nationalist Naftali Bennett who is most likely to rule the roost in Israel. Let's move ahead to know more about him and his political journey. Born in Israeli city of Haifa to immigrants from San Francisco, 49-year-old Naftali Bennett is a former commando and a high-tech millionaire. One generation younger than 71-year-old Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Bennett has had a long and often rocky relationship with Netanyahu. He worked with him between 2006 and 2008 as a senior aide to Netanyahu, who was then opposition leader. Bennett reportedly left on bad terms. He later stormed into national politics in 2013, serving as defense minister as well as Minister of Education and the Economy in various Netanyahu-led governments. Bennett has been an advocate of liberalizing the 
economy. He has voiced support for cutting government red tape for businesses and lowering living costs by increasing competition. Orthodox rabbis wield strong influence in Israel, but Bennett is comparatively liberal on issues such as gay rights and the relationship between religion and state. But on Palestine, his views are no different than Netanyahu's. He has cited security reasons to say that creation of a Palestinian state will be suicide for Israel. Bennett has been a staunch supporter of Jewish settlement in occupied territory. He is a former leader of Yesha, which is the main settler movement in the occupied West Bank. Bennett made annexation of parts of the West Bank a major feature of his political platform. But now, as the head of the government, including left-wing and centrist parties, while also relying on support in parliament from Arab legislators, it would be politically unfeasible to follow through on annexation.